Today we will talk about orthodontics and microimplants, beginning with indication and limitation. Talking about the microimplant benefits, we have easy surgical procedure of insertion and removal, absolute anchorage, new direction of forces, major effectiveness of a mass dental movement, reduction of treatment time, less necessity for patient cooperation, especially if we compare microimplant with intermaxillary elastic or headgear, proven to be clinically effective, applicable to mandible or maxilla, with other absolute anchorage appliances, the microimplant can be inserted in much more location, can be used in growing patients, it's possible to do effective asymmetrical mechanics, and also it's possible to do effective segmental mechanics, immediate loading, make possible difficult cases with the traditional mechanics, and reduce the necessity of orthognatic surgery. Indications, we have molar intrusion, molar uprighting by chrome distalizing or by root mesialisalizing, anterior open by treatment with molar intrusion with or without extraction, anterior deep by treatment with incisal intrusion with or without extraction or without extraction, leveling of transverse dipping of occlusal plane, extraction cases, distalizing or anchorage after distal movement with other kind of appliances such as pendulum, closed eruption or included or not included teeth, asymmetric expansion, bodily movement of teeth or a group of teeth, a surgical fixation with lingual brackets, absolute anchorage in lingual orthodontics, they can be used in other. And about counterindications, we have systemic diseases such as diabetes, osteoporosis, osteomyelitis, blood dyscrasias, metabolic disorder, patients undergoing the radiotherapy in arch, psychological disorders, presence of active oral infections, uncontrolled periodontal disease, presence of pathological formation in the zone such as tumor or cysts, insufficient space for insertion of microimplant, thin cortical bone and insufficient retention, deficient quality of the bone, soft tissue lesions such as lichen planus, leucoplakia, etc., and patient who does not accept microimplant treatment. And relative counterindications or relative limitations are tobacco, alcohol, and drugs abuse, mouth breather, and absence of ability to maintain the correct oral hygiene. Now we begin with one of the most important topics of the lecture, clinical procedure. And the technique that I use is Sardak technique, that means skeletal anchorage, right direction of the forces that we apply to the teeth, and also absolute control of the dental movement. Where we insert the microimplant had have a great meaning, meaning in the force direction control, and hook or not hook have a great meaning in torque and tip control. In this scheme, we can have all together the combination of different locations of the microimplant and also different length of the hooks. When we have the hook at the same level of the center of resistance and also the microimplant at the same level, we can obtain retrusion of the incisors, also maintaining the overbite and the torque. If we have a hook at the same level of the center of resistance and the microimplant in a higher position, we can retrude the incisors, reducing the overbite 
and maintaining the torque. And with a hook at the same level of the center of resistance and a lower position of the microimplant, we can make the retrusion of the incisors, but increasing the overbite and maintaining the torque. If we want to make a retrusion of the incisors, maintaining the overbite but reducing the torque, we will use a short hook and a microimplant at the same level. To retrude the incisors, reducing both overbite and torque, we use a short hook and a high position of the microimplant. And to increase the overbite but reducing the torque, we use a short hook and a lower position of the microimplant. If we want to make the retrusion maintaining the overbite but increasing the torque, we will use a long hook in a higher position than the center of resistance and the microimplant at the same level of the hook. To reduce the overbite and increase the torque, we use a long hook and a higher position of the microimplant, like this. And to increase both overbite and torque, we use a long hook and a lower position of the microimplant. Also, we can use direct anchorage. That means that we pull the teeth that we want to move directly from the microimplant. And this is always the best option. Or in direct anchorage, in those cases that we pull the tooth from other tooth that don't, we don't want to move and increase their anchorage with a microimplant and a wire ligature like this example. This is the kit that I use, the kit of Anchor Pro, that have a long screwdriver ratchet that is optional, a thumb wheel, two driver insert, one short and one long, the latch lock driver, pilot drill, 12 x-ray guide and 12 micro implant with different length, 6, 8 and 10 millimeters. And this is the design of the Anchor Pro microimplant that I use. The length begin in the collar and finishing in the tip. And this is could be 6, 8 or 10 millimeters. The direction of the thread is good for both techniques, self-tapping or self-drilling. The collar is very important and its diameter is two and a half millimeter and prevent the overgrowing of the soft tissue. Also, we have only one design for the head that fits majority of the cases. It is round, so it protects lips and cheeks. This cube separate the elastic elements like elastic change or coil spring from the gingival tissues and in this hole which diameter is 22 fits majority of the wires that we can use. The 6, the 8 or the 10 millimeters micro implant can be inserted with a lateral driver with a contra-angle that go under 400 revolution minutes or 
with the short or the long inserts that they fit in the three sand wheel, ratchet or screwdriver. We have three different lengths and one unique head and the three are made by titanium type 4 so they are completely biocompatible and also enough strong to support the formation of fractures. Also, to select which one is the best option for each case, we need to measure the thickness of the mucosa because we need to insert the microimplant 4 to 5 millimeters inside the bone. So, depending on the thickness of the mucosa, we will use the 6, the 8, or the 10 length microimplant. This is the X-ray guide, driver insert, thumb wheel, the ratchet, and the screwdriver. Also the latch lock driver that we use, both latch lock driver or the pilot drill with a contra-angle for prosthetic implants working at 400 revolution per minute or a contra-angle with a reduction 16 to 1. We have two possibilities to insert the microimplant. The direct insertion technique that is without previous drilling or the indirect insertion technique that is with previous drilling. This is a case of a deep bite and I will insert two microimplants in the anterior area to intrude the incisors. First, we make the diagnosis. Of the case, and we can use the software microplant specially designed for microimplants. We can also use palpation if we have enough space for the insertion of the microimplant, and also we can use the X-ray guide. This infection is a mast, and we use betadine solution. This is very, very important because infection is one of the most important causes of failures. So disinfection completely the field and also a sterilization of the all instrument and a good surgical technique to maintain the sterilization. Then we place the X-ray guide exactly in the place when where we think we will insert the microimplant and fix them with Fermit, that is late cure temporary cement from Rivadent, and take an X-ray to be sure that this is a correct place. If the X-ray guide is not exactly in the place that we want, we can change the position of the X-ray guide and take another apical radiography. Also, we can fix the X-ray guide with puri silicon or ligating it to the brackets. When we are sure of the place where we will insert the microimplant, we make the anesthesia. There are different options for anesthesia. We can use topic anesthesia, we can use no needle anesthesia, but I recommend needle anesthesia. Because by using the needle, making contact with the bone, and then using an endodontic stop, we can measure the thickness of the mucosa. 
and by adding four or five millimeters, we know exactly the length of the microimplant that is most indicated for this case. Also, with the needle, we are injecting vasoconstrictors to have a clean fill. So, by placing the anesthesia, it's very important to measure the thickness of the mucosa and also not to inject more than a quarter of the liquid inside an anesthetic tube. This is very important for two reasons. One, if, if we in inject more liquid, we will increase the thickness of the mucosa. And second, we only want to put anesthetic in the soft tissues, but not in the bone. In this case, the patient will not feel pain because the pain only comes from the soft tissues and the bone don't make feel pain. But if we are near to the periodontal space, the patient will advise, advise us and then we can stop and change the direction. So we use a lower quantity of anesthesia to have a warning alarm if you are near to the roof. First step is the measurement of the mucosa thickness. And step number five is decision with the scalpel and separation of the soft tissues. I fully recommend the separation to avoid the insertion of soft tissues inside the bone. So we use a scalpel or also we can use a punch. The punch should be one and a half millimeter diameter. After it, we insert the microimplant using the screwdriver that always is the best option, the ratchet or the latch lock driver. Always under irrigation with saline solution to have a clean field. Then we check the stability using a cotton tweezer and the microimplant should be stable from the first moment because the rotation is with friction, not with os integration. And after it, we make an X-ray control. In the left side, we use the same procedure, anesthetic, measurement of the mucosa thickness, incision with the scalpel, and insertion of the microimplant. Checking the stability and X-ray control. Also, we can make an immediate loading and as you can see, we can pull the teeth in a vertical direction exactly in the direction that we want to intrude the teeth with no side effects. So we can go from here to here in two months, correcting properly a deep bite very, very easy. We can intrude around one millimeter per month. The indirect insertion technique with previous drilling is especially indicated when the cortical bone is too hard, too hard. So, disinfection, anesthesia, and measurement of the mucosa thickness, incision with the scalpel, and then we use the pilot drill only to make a notch in the cortical bone using a contra-angle with a reduction, 
not working more than 400 revolutions per minute and always under irrigation of saline solution. And then we can insert a microimplant. In this case, that have a difficult access, I use it first the latch lock driver and then to finish the screwdriver. It's very recommendable to begin the insertion with the latch lock driver only until it is stable, but not finishing the insertion with the latch lock driver because it could be easy to damage the rod. So finishing with the screwdriver, checking the stability and an X-ray control.